Hello, my dear students. So welcome to my class, the Pathophysics. New topic: Wave front and hygiene principle, reflection and refraction of plane wave fronts on the basis of hygiene principle. That means today we start the wave theory of light. Previously, we learned about the ray optics. In ray optics, without considering what is the nature of light, only considering the light or light travels in a straight line path, we deal all the things geometrically. Therefore, ray optics is also known as geometrical optics. And already we have also learned about the electromagnetic waves. Now we know one nature of light is the electromagnetic waves. That means in ray optics, we are not considering what is the actual nature of light, but uh, what is the actual nature of light that will be deal in this chapter. And here we consider the wave nature of light. And in future, we will also learn about the particle nature of light. Presently, if you asked what is the light, now, according to wave theory of light, light is a form of energy which travels through a medium in the form of transverse wave motion. The speed of light in medium depends upon the nature of medium. According to Maxwell, light is an electromagnetic wave which consists of mutually perpendicular time varying electric and magnetic fields. The electromagnetic light wave travels in a direction perpendicular to both the electric and magnetic fields. That means light, it is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. It is a combination of both varying electric field and magnetic field. These are two mutually perpendicular to each other and they vibrate in the same phase with the same frequency and the direction of propagation of light waves that is perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field. In future, another nature that will also we learn that will be the particle nature of light and uh, photoelectric effect, Compton effect, Raman effect, all these are explained with the help of this particle nature of light. Presently, when you asked what is the nature of light, then you have to give answer light has dual nature, both particle in nature, also in wave in nature. So in this chapter, basically, we will deal about the wave nature of light. And uh, to deal the wave nature of light, to deal the different fact of wave nature of light, uh, Huygens initially introduced some concept. First of all, we have to learn about the wave front. It is a very common and widely used term in this wave optics. What is the wave front? A wave front is defined as the continuous locus of all particles of a medium which are vibrating in the same phase at a given instant. That means when light passing through a medium at any place, if we add all the same phase that means all the points which are vibrating in the or oscillating in the same phase, these continuous locus that will be nothing but a surface, and that surface will be known as the wave front at that point. Depending on the shape of the source of light, wave front can be of three types. That means there are three types of surface, wave front, and on each and every wave front. The phase of oscillation of electric and magnetic field are equal at each and every point. That means if we consider the it is a mechanical wave, then we can define continuous locus of all the particles of a medium which are vibrating in the same phase at a given instant. Practically, <clears throat> at the beginning, it was not known to the hygiene that uh, light wave, it is an electromagnetic waves. And initially, just like sound wave, sound wave, he considered that light 
also a mechanical web and it needs some medium but the speed of light is so high and uh, we know the velocity of a transverse wave mechanical wave in a medium that is root over e that is coefficient of elasticity or modulus of elasticity if you have a rho that is the density there was no such a medium which has so high elasticity and low density such that the velocity of the sound as velocity of the light that will be 3 into 10 to the 8 meter per second very high speed then initially it was considered there is a imagine there is an imaginary uh, medium that is ether medium and uh, which has both uh, e that is coefficient of velocity high and density low but later on when maxwell established that light wave it is not a mechanical wave it is the nothing but electromagnetic waves and which required no medium to transfer from one point to another point and then that theory was cancelled presently we are knowing that light wave is nothing but electromagnetic waves so at that time so when we define the wave front according to that view initially it was defined as the continuous locus of all particles of a medium but practically there is no requirement of the medium now we can say all the locus of all continuous points where the phase of vibrations are same now we will consider about the different type of wave front according to source of light the shape of the source of light size of the source of light we can divide all the wave front into three groups number one spherical wave front and if you write shortcut then swf in this case of waves traveling in all directions from a point source the wave fronts are spherical in nature this is because all such points which are equidistant from the point source will lie on a sphere and that disturbance starting from the source s will reach all these points simultaneously that means if we consider a point source let us suppose that it is s1 and uh, the light is traveling in all directions initially all lights emitting from the source they are at the same phase and when it uh, all light travels equal distance so all these points which are equidistant from the source these will be also in the same phase that means the locus of all e same phase points that will be on surface here that surface will be spherical surface because if we take the source s at the center of a sphere spherical surface is equidistant now this circle it is drawn as a circle but uh, uh, it is a spherical surface not a circle we are drawing here in two dimensional case therefore we drawing just like a circle but you have to think it is not a circle it is a spherical surface and it is another wave front it is another wave front so when we consider a point source of light the shape of the wave fronts these will be spherical in nature all will be spherical another type of wave front that is a cylindrical wave front cwof when the source of light is linear in shape such as a fine rectangular slit slit means nothing but hole one linear hole is known as a slit let us suppose one rectangular slit that is made up by some container and behind that slit there is a source of light then that slit is now become a source of light also so if we consider a such type of slit rectangular slit the wave front is cylindrical in shape simply if we take a linear source that is s so all the distance on the cylinder which axis is the linear source and the radius that is c into t after time t then this cylindrical surface at each and every point on this cylinder the phase of vibrations or oscillations will be same and you also get another cylinder next cylinder next cylinder you don't think that only there is a one wave front if you consider any point at that point there should be one wave front but uh, when we take two successive wave front between the two wave front successive wave front that may be spherical 
or that may be cylindrical that two successive poem front will be equidistant this is because the locus of all such points which are equidistant from the linear source will be cylindrical or cylindrical surface so first of all when the source is point source of light the wave front nature of the wave front or shape of the front that will be spherical in shape but when we consider it is a linear source of light the wave front shape will be cylindrical in shape now another that is the wave front plane wave front let us suppose light coming from a distant source and we consider when light coming from the distant source they become parallel for a small reason when a spherical or cylindrical wave front advances its curvature decreases progressively so a small portion of such a wave front at a large distance from the source will be a plane wave front that means simply if we take the parallel beam of light the wave front these will be the plane wave front when the spherical either spherical or cylindrical wave front propagate gradually radius increases and we if we consider a small small part or some small portion of that spherical or cylindrical wave front that like seems to be like to be a plane surface or plane wave front just like our surface we know earth is a sphere the shape of the earth spherical but for the small region we can consider the shape that is the plane surface similarly when the cylindrical or spherical wave front advances the curvature decreases progressively so a small portion of such a wave front at a large distance from the source will be a plane wave front so now we have three types of wave front spherical wave front for the point source of light cylindrical wave front for the linear source of light and when lights are parallel beam that is coming from the distant source at a small region we can consider the plane wave front as for example light coming from the sun initially all lights are diverging from the sun but for a reason in a particular place we are considering the sunlight parallel beam of light and here also we can consider the wave front as a plane wave front now from the concept of the wave front how can we find out the ray of light what is the meaning of the ray of light now an arrow head drawn perpendicular to a front in a direction of propagation of wave is called the ray of light practically ray of light represents the path along which light travels now how can we find out the ray of light with respect to the wave front now an arrow drawn perpendicular to a wave front in the direction of propagation of a wave is called a ray that means how can you find out the wave front or how can you find out the rays if you know the wave front now these two are mutually perpendicular to each other just like equipotential surface when we have to draw any equipotential surface first of all we consider what are the directions of the field lines at that places and if we take the perpendicular surface to the field lines that surface will be equipotential surface exactly similar exactly similar concept also applied here the rays and the equipotential surface these two are mutually perpendicular so if you asked to draw any equipotential surface first you consider the rays of light or imagine what will be the direction of the rays of light and then if you draw at any point the surface which are perpendicular to all these rays then that surface will be known as a wave front if we measure the separation between a pair of wave fronts along any ray it is found to be a constant the time taken for light to travel from one wave front to another is the same along any ray that means it is let us suppose it is one plane wave front it is another wave front so light first light second ray of light third ray of light time taken to cover the distance between the two wave front that will be same for all the rays of light here also in case of the spherical wave front light time taken to uh, taken by the light to pass from one wave front to another wave front that time is equal for all the rays of light 
in case of a plane wave front the rays are naturally parallel or if you have a parallel beam of light the wave front that will be plane wave front because if we consider a surface which is perpendicular to all rays that surface is nothing but a perpendicular surface so these are the plane surface because all the rays are parallel to each other and their perpendicular surface obviously that will be a plane surface in case is of a spherical wave front the rays either converging to a point or a diverging that means spherical wave front you will get when the light will convert or if you have spherical wave front this type of these are normal circles or lines these are sphere we are drawing here in two dimensional case therefore just behaves just look like a circle but you have to think these are not the circles these are the spherical wave front spherical surfaces curved surfaces in this case rays are converging at a point here the wave front this will be spherical in nature and if the light diverges from a point here also the wave front this will be the spherical wave front now we have three types of wave front initially we have developed a concept that is what is the wave front and how can you find out the wave front how can you draw the wave front now hygiene's principle hygiene's principle is the basis of wave theory of light it tells how a wave front propagates through a medium that means the wave front propagate since light propagate light energy propagate and when we consider light as a wave then wave front is also propagate now how these wave front propagate and after a certain time t what will be the new position of that a particular given wave front that can be obtained with the help of hygiene's principle and these are nothing but some type of postulates or assumptions now it becomes these becomes principles according to him that means according to hygiene's <clears throat> each point on a wave front act as a fresh source of new disturbance called secondary wave or wavelets wavelet means new waves baby waves called secondary waves that means each and every point on a wave front act as a fresh source of new disturbance disturbance means source of light is also known as the source of disturbance because it produces the electrical and magnetic disturbance or oscillations and they combine to each other form the light waves therefore source of light that is also known as the source of disturbance and each and every point on the any given wave front just behave like a source of light secondary waves or wavelets so wavelets from the baby waves the secondary wavelets spread out in all directions with the speed of light in the given medium in the same medium all the wavelets that means baby waves they travel in all directions equally with the speed of light number 2 the new wave front at any later time is given by the forward envelope tangential surface in the forward directions of the secondary wavelets at that point new wave front at any later time is given by the forward envelopes that means forward envelope means each and every point now becomes each and every point now becomes a secondary source of light and they produce the light waves so when they produce light waves each and every point just produces spherical wave fronts after that time t the all the spheres whose radius is just c into t c the speed of light and then if we consider one another surface tangential surface that is known as the envelope surface in the forward direction that will be the the position of the secondary wavelets secondary wavelets means we can consider the primary wavelets in time t moves to that positions and that is position of the corresponding secondary wavelets and uh, later on we will discuss it about it how can you this in according to this let us suppose uh, a b it is one given spherical wave front it is not a circle it is a spherical surface we draw here as a circle the cross section of spherical surface now each and every point on this ab wave front that just behave like a source of light 
secondary source of light or baby waves they produce each and every point produce baby waves and they travels in all directions in the forward directions after certain time t here we draw we i draw only two spheres but each and every point there will be sphere and if we consider all these it is a surface envelope surface uh, in the forward direction forward direction means in the direction of propagation of the light waves and then this envelope that will be the secondary wave front and we can consider that ab that is the given wave front is known as the primary wave front it will move uh, to the cd that is the corresponding secondary wave fronts that means with the help of this hygiene principle we can find out or the position of the secondary wave fronts or we can say how the wave fronts propagate in a medium now hygiene construction if these uh, principles these are also known as the hygiene construction practically why it is so called hygiene construction and it is a geometrical method of locating the new position and shape of a wave front at any instant from its known position and shape at any other instant that means what will be the new positions and what will be the shape of this wave front after certain time t we can find out with the help of these two statements therefore these are also known as the hygiene construction you know, sometimes these statement are known as the hygiene principle hygiene assumptions hygiene postulates and sometimes these are also called hygiene constructions also because with the help of these two statement we can find out what will be the position of the given wave front later on here let us suppose ab the position of a wave front at any instant time of t according to hygiene principle each point on ab becomes a source of secondary disturbance which travels with the same speed c to find the new wave front after time t we draw spheres of radii c into t from each point on ab that means according to hygiene principle let us suppose ab is a given wave front it may be a plane wave front ab and according to hygiene principle each and every point on this wave front just becomes a source of secondary wavelets mother baby waves now these wavelets travels equally in all directions and in the same medium with the same speed so after time t what will be the position of the ab what will be the position of the ab the, when the wave is propagating that means wave front is also propagating in the forward directions that can be obtained if we take the spheres of radius c into t c is the speed of light in that medium t of time interval then in time since the medium is the same c will be same ct will be same then if we draw all the spherical surfaces and after that if we take the envelope surface that is outward envelope surface that means in the direction of the propagation of light in the envelope surface this will represent the position of the secondary wave front that means ab we can say the ab wave front reach cd after time t so, so we draw the spheres of radius ct that means we can construct the position of the wave front from each point on ab the forward envelope or the tangential surface ct to the secondary wave pairs give the new wave front after time t in case of if the wave front is a plane wave front given a wave front is a plane wave front and we also get the secondary wave front if we take each and every point spheres of radius c into t then the outwards or in the production envelope surface that will be secondary wave front that means we can say in time t the ab wave front that is propagating and the new positions of this ab that is the cd so ab is known as the primary wave front or given wave front and cd is corresponding secondary wave front of the time t uh, the position of the ab we can consider a forward envelope or tangential surface it is very careful that uh, you should be careful that uh, here we are drawing the lines but these are not the lines these are the surfaces and uh, here we are saying the polar envelope according to hygiene principle wave lapse that means baby waves they also move in backward direction in all directions 
then why we consider only the envelope in the forward directions why we are not considering the ef also a secondary wave front no backward wave front is possible why it is why no backward question we are saying that a cd is the new wave front of the ab but ef it is not the new wave front because it is in the backward direction because light propagating from this a to this one they put right in this figure diagram according to hygens only the forward wave front should be considered since there is no backward flow of energy during the propagation of a wave that means hygens stated that since light is moving in the forward directions that means light waves moving in the forward directions therefore new wave front will be in the forward direction since there is no light that is passes through the backward directions therefore there will be no uh, we should not consider the wave front in the backward directions practically in the backward direction the net resultant uh, flow of energy will be zero it can be shown mathematically that the amplitude of secondary wavelets is proportional to 1 plus cos of theta where theta is the angle between the ray at that point of consideration and the direction of secondary wavelets that means direction of the secondary wavelets at that point secondary wavelet practically according to wave theory move in all directions but the ray of light in a particular direction so what is the, the angle between the ray of light that means it is the ray of light let us suppose and what is the direction of the propagation of wavelets if we consider it is the source of one secondary waves that means wavelets secondary waves moves in all directions at the different direction the theta will be different in the along the same direction propagation of the light theta is a zero degree at that time cos theta is a one that means proportional is value is the maximum when theta is angle between the ray at that point of consideration and the direction of secondary wavelets for a backward wave front that means when you consider the wavelets um, is a moving along the backward actions in such a case theta is the pi so that one plus cos of theta is zero that's the resultant amplitude of all the secondary wave layers at any point on the backward wave front is zero so a backward wave front cannot exist simply we consider the wave front in the forward directions there will be two envelope surface one is the backward direction one is the forward directions but we will consider only the wave front in the forward directions because there is no uh, flow of light energy in the backward directions and mathematically it can be shown the resultant amplitude of all the secondary wavelets at any instant, at any point on the backward wave front is zero so a backward wave front cannot exist now our the aim basic aim of these topics explains on the reflection of light on the basis of Huygens wave theory and reflection of light on the basis of Huygens wave theory. When we consider the wave theory, we consider the reflection or reflection. Here we consider one wave front, especially now we are treating that wave front that is the plane wave front. Let us consider a plane wave front AB incident on the plane reflecting surface XY. That means x y let us suppose it is one mirror and look this uh, ray diagram carefully a b is the incident wave front and that is a plane wave front and c d that will be the reflected wave front how can we find out the position of the c d that is secondary wave front here a b a b is the incident wave front and that is the given wave front and you cannot think that uh, there is only one wave front and there is several wave fronts. The wave fronts are moving, and so many wave fronts they are also coming, and uh, in the direction of the uh, wave, light waves. Here, x y the reflecting surface AB the incident wave front. So many rays corresponding to the AB plane wave front, but here we are drawing here only the two rays at the two ends. Let us suppose or two extremes of the ab wave front first of all in this case the ray sb that light 
along this direction they reflect back and they moving it will not wait for the light related to the a point which will get reflected after some time after some time it will get reflected at that time the initially reflected sb that will process in the same medium with the same velocity c so <clears throat> here uh, another things also we consider another consideration both the wave front and the reflecting surface being perpendicular to plane of paper here we are drawing the cross sections but ab it is a surface perpendicular surface perpendicular to the paper and uh, xy also that is a mirror or reflecting surface that is also perpendicular to the paper first the wave front touches the reflecting surface at p and then at the successive points toward the c first reflecting ray is the sb that means first part of the uh, incident wave front that is the b point is reflected first and then uh, the, then the successive points toward the c in accordance with huygens principle from each point on bc that means on this surface secondary wavelets start growing with the speed c during the time of disturbance from a reaches the point c the secondary wavelets from b must have spread over a hemisphere of radius bd is equal to a into c that is c into t where t is the time taken by the disturbance to travel from a to c the tangent plane cd drawn from the point c over the hemisphere of radius ct will be new reflected wave front that means the ray or light waves corresponding to the point a that will reflect back by the same reflecting surface later on and let us suppose that time is the t and during that time the first reflecting wave that moves a distance bd that will be also equal to ct now how can we draw the secondary or reflected wave front corresponding to incident wave front ab according to huygens principle each and every point on the bc just behave like a source of secondary wavelets and if we take the radius that is equal to ac that is equal to c into t c the speed of light in that medium into t the time taken to reach the light from a point to c point at the same time the light passes in the same medium bd and obviously that bd that will be equal to ac that is equal to ct and now if we draw a hemisphere by taking the radius c into t and if we this draw and the tangential surface that will be reflected wave front according to huygens principle that means the touching surface tangential surface this surface if we draw all these pairs h and every point and that is equal to the c into t for the different points so this is the cd is the reflected wave front now look at this figure diagram again i am saying again ab is the incident wave front cd is the reflected wave front and this if it is the ray is the first ray then is this angle is the i angle of incidence we know the angle between the normal drawn at point of incidence and the incident ray that is the angle of incidence here this plus this is 90 degree because the ray of light is always perpendicular to the wave front this plus this is 90 degree and it is the normal therefore this angle plus this angle is the 90 degree since this is common therefore we can say this angle i therefore angle a b c also i angle now this i angle is nothing but the angle of incidence now here we are saying the angle between the incident wave front and the plane reflecting surface that angle is known as the angle of incidence uh, what is the angle of incidence the angle between the incident wave front and the reflecting surface this angle is angle of incidence similarly the this angle is r this is angle also r that is angle of reflection and that is angle between the reflected wave front and the reflecting surface xy this angle r r is the angle of reflection now from this figure diagram we can easily prove 
the i is equal to r that is our target this is written here let us in the a b c d this one a to new was effect by front let us angles of incidence and reflection be i and r respectively now our target is we have to prove the laws of reflections and to prove that we have to prove that i angle is equal to r angle angle of incidence equal to angle of reflections there are two triangles abc one triangle and bdc another triangle in these two triangles already we know ac that is equal to bd that is equal to c into t this angle is a 90 degree and this angle is also 90 degree this is 90 degree this angle is also 90 degree because the wave front always perpendicular the ray of the light and this is the bc is the common therefore triangle a b c and triangle b d c in the two triangles 90 degree 90 degree these are equals and bc is hypotenuse that is also common bc for the both triangles therefore triangle a b c and triangle b d c these two are congruent triangles therefore corresponding angles will be equal here so, I is the angle opposite to the side AC and R is the angle opposite to side BD, AC equal to BD. Therefore, I and R, these two are corresponding angles. And since these two triangles are congruent triangles, therefore, I will be R. And it, these statements are written here. These are, these are the angle of incidence, angle of reflection, I and R respectively in this triangle abc and this uh, here are two angles right angles bc common ac is equal to bd is equal to ct therefore triangle abc congruent to triangle dcb and triangle therefore corresponding angle abc equal to dcb or i is equal to r that is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection this proves the light the, this was the first law of reflection. That means, uh, with the help of this wavefront theory, with the help of Huygens principle, we can find out the secondary wavefront, that is reflected wavefront. And from the basic geometrical theory, now we have I is equal to R, and that is nothing but the uh, one law or first law of the reflection. For the second law, we have to give some logical statement. Further, since the incident ray SB, the normal BN, and the reflected ray BD are respectively perpendicular to the incident wavefront AB, the reflecting surface XY, and the reflected wavefront CD, all of which are perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Therefore, they all lie in the plane of the paper, that is, in the same plane, this proves the second law of reflection. That means after proving I is equal to R, you have to give some logical statement that incident ray, reflected ray, normal drawn at front of incidence, all will be on the same plane. Here, since all these are perpendicular to these surfaces, surface means it is the it is perpendicular to the AB and reflected also perpendicular BD, also perpendicular to the CD and uh, normal it is perpendicular to the xy since a b xy and cd all these are perpendicular to the plane of the paper therefore we can say that sb bn normal and bd all will be on the plane of the paper since all these three are perpendicular to the plane of the paper therefore all these will be on the plane of the paper and that is nothing but the statement of the second law that means angle of uh, incident ray Reflected ray, normal drawn at point of incidence, all lie on the same plane. In this case, that this plane, this plane is the plane of the paper. Now we can, we have to prove the reflection. We have to treat the reflection on the basis of Huygens wave theory. Here, Huygens reflection means Snell's law. We are basically we are dealing about the Snell's law. Let us consider a plane wave front AB incident on a plane surface xy it is again a b the one incident wave front um, that is uh, uh, a b uh, x y the reflecting surface it is one medium uh, it is another medium first medium is a rarer medium here we consider v1 and v2 
V the velocities of light in the two media with V2 less than V1, here V1 greater than V2, and we know at the denser medium, the speed of light decreases. At the denser medium, speed of light decreases. Since we consider the V2 less than V1, that the second medium is the denser medium, first medium is the rarer medium. Now, AB is the incident wavefront, SA, it is one ray, incident ray, and there are several rays corresponding to this wavefront AB, but we are considering only two extreme rays, one is the SA, and I is the angle of incidence. Here, I, S, A, and A, B, these two are perpendicular, therefore this angle and this angle is, this plus this angle is 90 degree. And obviously it is a normal, therefore this angle plus this angle 90 degree, this angle is common, therefore you can say that it is I angle, this is also I angle. The angle between the incident wavefront and the reflecting surface, that is also known as the angle of incidence. Basically when we are saying about the wavefront, in case of reflection or reflection, we have to say angle between the incident wavefront and the reflecting surface. That angle is the angle of incidence. And uh, now the first uh, is uh, the first uh, part of this wavefront that is reflected to the second medium initially, and gradually next all the part or waves related to this wavefront reflected to the second medium. At last, the end, at the end, that means wave related to the point B of this wavefront AB that will reflect it to the second medium at, at the last. And uh, let us suppose time taken for it, that means to move the light from B to C point, that is the T. And therefore B to C, the distance will be V1 into T, since V1 is the speed of light in the first medium or error medium. It is a plane wavefront. Now, after that, uh, uh, in the second medium, since it is different, the, at the same time T, the first uh, light waves which are reflected to the second medium moves a shorter distance that is v2 into t and uh, by knowing the v2 into t if we take one radius and if you draw one hemisphere then this uh, envelope surface or touching surface tangential surface here we draw a line but it uh, you have to consider it is a tangential surface that will be also a plane surface and that will be reflected wavefront that means if we take one hemisphere of radius V2 into T, not V1 into T, V2 into T, because in time T, the light corresponding uh, point A that moves AD, and that AD is distance nothing but the V2 into T. Then it is a reflecting wavefront, reflected wavefront. Again, this angle is the R angle, you can say this is angle is R angle, or this angle plus this angle 90 degree, this plus this 90 degree, this is the R angle. Or from here also this angle R angle, this angle is R angle. Here the R is the angle of reflection. What is the angle of reflection? The angle between the reflecting surface and the reflected wavefront. This is here. Now the, the wavefront first, all these are written here, the wavefront. Uh, first strike at point A and then at the successive point toward the C. According to Huygens principle, from each point on AC, the secondary wavelet start growing in the second medium with speed V2. Let us the disturbance takes time T to travel from B to C. This travel from B to C point that is the t time, then bc is equal to v1 into t. During that time, the disturbance from b reaches the point c. The secondary wavelets from point a must have spread over a hemisphere of radius ad that is equal to v into t in the second medium. The tangent plane cd drawn from point c over the hemispheres of the radius V2 T will be new reflect, reflected wavefront. Now let us triangle of incidence and refractions. And that is the angle of incident is the I angle, uh, angle of refraction is the R angle respectively. So from these two triangles, now we can write these 
again look at this ray diagram first you have to draw the ray diagram correctly and it is very important one you have to practice it otherwise you cannot draw it directly in the exam hall you have to practice it several times now this angle is the i angle angle of incidence that is the angle of r angle of reflection this is the v1t this side and this side is the v2 into t now we have to consider two triangles triangle a b c triangle and triangle a d c in the triangle a b c if we take sine of i sine of angle i that will be b c divided by a c and in triangle a d c if we take sine of r that will be a d divided by a c sin i i am saying again sin i is the bc divided by ac sin of r that is the ad divided by dc and after that taking this sin of i is bc by ac and sin of i the ad by ac dividing both sin i by sin r that will be the bc by ac into ac divided by ad dividing it AC divided by AD and AC AC cancel out each other. Therefore, sine I by sine R that will be BC divided by AD. That is V1T divided by V2 into T. Now TT cancel out. Therefore, sine I by sine R that is the V1 by V2. That is the speed of light in the first medium, different speed of light in the second medium. Since V1 and V2 are constant for these two medium, therefore the V1 by V2 it is constant and it is written by the one mu T. That is nothing but the reflective index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. As a whole, it is a constant. V1 by V2, that is 1 by U2, it is a constant. Therefore, sin i by sin r is constant. It is nothing but the Snell's law of reflection. The constant term 1 mu 2 is called the reflective index of the second medium with respect to first medium. That means we already know reflective index of the speed of the uh, light in the first medium to the speed of light in the divided by speed of light in the second medium, that is the reflective index of the second medium with respect to first medium, and that is equal to sine i by sine r. Now, with the help of the wavefront concept, by drawing the wavefront, constructing the wavefront with the help of the Huygens principle, we have now sine i by sine r is equal to v1 by v2. Therefore, it is the proof of the Snell's law with the help of the wavefront theory. Further, since the incident ray, SA, the normal AN, and the reflected ray AD are respectively perpendicular to the incident wavefront AB. The dividing surface XY, that means the reflecting surface XY, and the reflected wavefront CD all perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Therefore, they all lie in the plane of the paper, that is, in the same plane. This proves another law of reflection. That means second law of reflection you have to say also, but uh, we are saying logically, just like of the law of second law of ref, uh, reflection, uh, since incident ray, reflected ray, and normal drawn, all these are perpendicular to the respectively incident wave front and the reflected wave front and the reflecting surface. Since all these surfaces are perpendicular to the paper, the incident ray, reflected ray, and normal drawn at point of incidence, they will lie on the plane of the paper and it is nothing but a second law. Sometimes in the questions it is given that light is a, a in case of angle of reflection greater than the angle of incidence. Normally uh, light uh, passes from the rarer to denser medium. All the treatment will be same but figure diagram that will be different and you should uh, notice it otherwise that will be penalty in your examinations and several times it is it happens that a student uh, they didn't uh, they did not care about the questions and they are drawing like passes on the rarer to denser medium and some marks penalty i eat them so you should look the questions uh, what is given in the questions light is passes from the denser to rarer medium when light passes denser to rarer medium obviously the light rays this is a bent wave from this normal then incident wave from will be cd again but the figure diagram will be slightly different from the when light passes from the rarer to denser medium be careful about it other treatments other statements 
this will be the same, but only the um, change in this angle of incidence that will be less than the angle of ref in reflection. Uh, it, in this case, the figure diagram is related to the when light passes from the rarer to denser medium. But if you ask that uh, you have to draw the from denser to rarer, then you have to draw in this way. Be careful about it. Be notice uh, noticeable about it. Now, behavior of a prism, a lens, and a spherical mirror towards plane wavefront. It is a plane wavefront when passes through the prism, that transmitted wavefront, that also a plane wavefront. And you know these are the parallel beam, which is also parallel beam of light, and the uh, wavefront that is a perpendicular to the uh, rays, therefore easily you can draw it. So when light passes through the prism, the incident wavefront and reflected, uh, reflected wavefront or transmitted wavefront, both are plane wavefront, you have to draw in this way. Similarly, when uh, uh, if we consider a convex lens, a parallel beam of light, which is parallel to the principal axis, they're passing through the lens. And after the passing through the lens, these uh, rays will be converging. And obviously, the reflected wavefront, that will be the spherical wavefront. But incident wavefront is the plane wavefront. Similarly, if uh, you take one source of light that is placed at the focus, of the convex lens, then incident wavefront is the spherical wavefront or the spherical wavefront, but reflected wavefronts are the plane wavefront because after passing through the lens, these will be parallel. So similarly, you can draw also in case of incident light uh, parallel to the axis of a concave mirror after reflection, they converge at point that is the focus. The incident wavefront that is a plane wavefront, but this is wavefront, this wavefront, the spherical wavefront. Similarly, if we take the source of light at the focus of that concave mirror, then incident wavefront, the spherical wavefront, and the reflected wavefront, that will be the plane wavefront. So in this way, different cases, we can draw the uh, shape of the wavefront. First of all, you have to draw the rays and we know now the wave fronts are perpendicular to the rays of light and then we have to consider the perpendicular surface and we can find out we can draw and able to draw on the uh, reflected wave front and the incident wave front here are known as the primary wave front and the reflected wave front known as the secondary wave front now it is the first uh, lesson and uh, the, you will get the note of this Last note uh, at the description box link given in this video. Uh, now, today finish it. Uh, we will meet tomorrow with new lessons.